right, so here's our final example for this section. Um, we're, we're given the following graph, which we're told illustrates the uh, velocity uh, of some function with respect to time, right? Or some object, right? So we've got velocity as a function of time for some object moving from some initial position, right? And so this brings us back to the beginning of this section where we, we established or observed this relationship between antiderivatives and area, right? And we said, okay, on the one hand, we know that, that position, right, is, is an antiderivative of velocity because velocity by definition is the derivative of position with respect to time, okay? Um, on the other hand, for constant velocity, we have, you know, the, the velocity times time gives us displacement, so we, we have this sort of area-like relationship, right? Um, so, seems plausible then that our displacement should be given in terms of signed area, in terms of a definite integral, right? Uh, so, the questions we might ask here are, here's the first question. Uh, what is the max velocity? Uh, well, we just kind of have to eyeball things from the graph. Right? This is velocity with respect to time. So where is the velocity a maximum? Up here, looks like it's about 15. Uh, I believe we're doing feet per second in this example. Okay. All right. Um, Second question, what is the max displacement? Okay, so at time zero, right, we, you know, we haven't gone anywhere, right? So displacement is zero, right? Um, maybe our starting position has some non-zero value, but in terms of our displacement from that position, we haven't moved yet, okay? So now from time zero up to this time A, right, our velocity is negative, right, which is viewed as moving backwards, I suppose, or moving down if we're thinking of vertical motion, right. Um, so we have negative displacement, we're going back, going back, right, and, and, and we hit a peak negative displacement here, okay, of 11, okay. Um, then our velocity returns to zero, and now it becomes positive, in our, and so we start increasing, right. So we start going up, 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 and you know, we're moving the other direction, right? Um, now our velocity peaks here, okay, right? Um, so what happens when the velocity peaks, right? We know that happens at a critical number. So it's the derivative of the velocity that's zero there. So acceleration is zero. So here we have actually a case where, you know, we have some acceleration going on, right? Um, so acceleration has to be zero up there, right? V prime is, is zero. Okay, fine. Um, so we have that going on, right? So acceleration, you know, we're kind of positively accelerating, um, and then we start negatively accelerating, so we're slowing down, slowing down, right, until we hit a velocity of zero, right? And then we start going backwards again. So what's the max displacement? Well, the, the furthest we get from our starting point happens here, right? It's going to be minus 11 plus 38, which is 27. So I suppose that's going to be in feet, right? Um, so it's the, it's the integral from 0 to a plus the integral from a to b, right? This one comes with a negative area. This one comes with positive. We add them together. We get the total displacement, right? So, so this is the integral from 0 to a of v of t dt. This is the integral from a to b, v of t dt, and that gives us the integral from 0 to b, v of t dt, right? Um, and if we were to continue on and add the integral from b to c, uh, well, then we're moving backwards again. So, um, you know, or if we add that on, we'll be subtracting another 11, and we're back closer to where we started, right? So the furthest that we get from our starting point is 27 feet, 